How do I handle bullies? Pretty much the same way I handle my taxes. I dodge them. <sighs> Bullying. It's a lot of responsibility. You have to mess with a lot of people. Like, there's creativity that goes into it. You got the chocolate swirly. You got the lemonade swirly. Um, you know, I think that you really just have to use your instincts when you, you're doing things like that to people. You, you can't go too far or else you're going to get turned in by the principal. You're probably going to have a criminal record by the time you're out of high school. Um, yeah. And, I mean, from personal experience, I mean, I guess I, I kind of had my growth spurt late. And uh, I was on the, the, the other side of that a lot, so... I would say, um, probably, probably be nice to people, and don't do that, it's not cool. How do I handle bullying? Well, as you know, I'm a pretty tough kid, and you know that kid that always gets picked on at school, and like, every day someone bullies him, and you kind of feel sorry for him? Well, that kid, he beat me up. How do I handle being a bully? Honestly, I really couldn't handle it well at all. I tried being a bully, and, and it just didn't work very well for me. You know, you go to slap someone's book out of their hand, and then you're not supposed to help them pick it back up. That's part of being a bully. You don't slap it out and help them. <sighs> but there was this one time, this kid was about to grab a piece of gum, and I reached under and grabbed it from under his desk, ate it right there in front of him. It was one of the pieces stuck on the edge. And it was a hot summer day, so it was still kind of gooey. Yeah, so classes these days have signs that say, no food, no drink, which is not cool, because the only thing you can sneak in there with is generally what you already got in your mouth, or what you have hidden in your wallet, stuff like that, uh, which is why uh, back in the day, I found it was very creative to pick the gum off the bottom of the tables, and it was plentiful, lots of it there. No, no scarcity, shortage of gum under tables. Assorted flavors, um, you got your big red, your juicy fruit, your winter green, your spearmint. You know, it's good. But um, somebody caught on to that and started taking the gum out of my hands after I pulled it off the table. And this jerk sat next to me every day in class, took all the gum I ever had, so I had to resort to, like, crumbs from pencils and stuff. It is So I can't tell you what the best snack is. I never got it. Sometimes in class, I like to chew my fingernails. That's a good snack. Um, and when those are too short, I usually chew someone else's fingernails. The best in-class snack I've ever had, and I have them, like, every day at school, are little chocolate chip cookies. And not just those little ordinary chocolate chip cookies that you could buy from the store or make yourself. But Zach's mom, mom's, Zach's mom makes extraordinary chocolate chip cookies. Like, extraordinary. Best in class snack. Um, I guess, I, I guess I see where this is going. I mean, kind of like a best in class, like, dog show. Kind of like, you know, best in class poodle. Um, I guess for the snack, I guess, best in class snack, um, would definitely be those Ferro Rocher chocolates, um, type deal things. Um, those are good. I mean, I don't like them, but I know a lot of rich people like them. They come in gold wrappers. That says a lot. Kind of like a, how most wrappers come in gold grills. It shows your class, you know. So... Ferro Rochers. Why is this question even pertinent? Mm, if that was out, usually I turn to my toenails, but okay, here's the issue. Like I can you can see I just can't even really reach. Ugh, I need to work out my hips more. Ouch. Certain situations. Had a lot of those in high school, if you know what I'm saying. And I think you do. Because I procrastinate a lot. I don't do my reading in class. 
the teacher's like, hey, answer this question. And I'm like, shoot, here's a certain situation. I didn't do the reading. I wasn't paying attention. She asked me to answer the question. I don't even know what the question is. So I'm like, ask, ask the dude next to me, right? Ask the chick to my right. No one else did the reading. Why pick on me? What, is it because I'm cool? Because I'm the cool kid? You have to pick on the cool kid? Is that how it is these days? A little, little discrimination? Yeah. Certain situations. You can do whatever you want in them because it doesn't really matter what you do because it's a lose-lose. Teachers hate you either way. Certain situations. This one's kind of a toughie because it's so specific. Like, let's say you're walking down the street and you trip and someone sees you which is obviously what this question's about. You don't want to act like you've tripped on purpose. Act like you did on purpose. You know, like you've been there before. Certain situation, I know what you're talking about. Okay, there was this person who is very certain, and we will call it him X, where X equals the certain man from the certain story in the certain situation, and Y equals, well, I'll just say it's me in this story, this hypothetical situation and X is angry at Y because X thinks Y did something and we don't even know why X thinks Y did this thing to him because it was really Z who did this to X and he made everyone think that Y did something mean to X and why does everyone think this? We don't even know. Nobody knows and I don't know but it wasn't even me. I mean why? Um, certain situations. You mean kind of like the situations where you're in line at the cafeteria and somebody comes up to you wearing a purple sweater and they have like their back pocket full of number two pencils and they whips another thing out of their other pocket. It's like a piece of paper with a bunch of names and all of a sudden they start erasing people's names off of it with all the number two pencils that they have in their pocket. Those type of situations. I usually just get my food from the lunch lady and leave. How to treat your peers? I think that's a very valid question we should all ask ourselves every day. Like, how should I treat my best friend? If I treat my best friend like my best friend, we'll be best friends. As long as I treat my best friend like my best friend. If I treat the cafeteria lady like the cafeteria lady, she'll feel pretty fulfilled in her duties. She'll feel like she's being a cafeteria lady, and she'll probably be a pretty darn good cafeteria lady until she decides not to be a cafeteria lady anymore. Um, like the bus driver when you're going home from school. If you treat the bus driver like someone else, like your mom, the bus driver's going to be confused. Like, why, why are you asking me to tuck you in? Why am I packing your lunch for you? Like, those types of questions should never pop in the mind of someone who's not really your mother. Um, so... I think that when thinking about how to treat people, you need to think about responsibilities. You need to pe put people in brackets, right? You have your tertiary friends, you have your, your secondary friends, your primary friends, your best friends, your family, your mom, your grandma, right? You can't mix that. You can't treat your tertiary friends like your mom because they're never going to be like your mom because that would be weird because then you'd have multiple moms and multiple tertiary friends. Right? Yeah. So, just treat them like, uh, keep them in their own brackets. This one's easy. Like, you're at the beach, let's say Santa Cruz, Monterey, San Francisco, Sacramento, and you see these piers that people just like graffiti on. You don't want to be the person that graffitis on piers. It's disrespectful, and I think you should treat piers with respect. I think there's two ways we could look at it. One is to treat people as we want to be treated, but then taking it further and treating people the way they want to be treated so that we do not get on their bad side and we stay on their good side. I treat my peers pretty much the same way I treat the government. Take advantage of their open hand policy. Free food! Uh, pretty much the best source of advice for me has easily been my mom, hands down. Um, she has always been there for me throughout junior high, high school, college, and even today. I'm still in college, and she's still there for me. 
Um, one of the best sayings, um, acronyms, I guess you can say, that she's always like kind of thrown my way whenever I'm going through a tough time, is keep it simple, son. Because she knows that when she calls me stupid, it really hurts my feelings. Yeah. Hmm. I've read the works of Socrates, of Solomon the Great, of St. Paul, of other renowned people across our galaxy, and I would have to say it is easily Zach's mother. I've been around like a really long time, almost 21 years, and I've colored in a lot of coloring books, read a lot of my coloring books, and magazines, such as like sports and stuff, and out of all those things, none of those give very good advice, but the best advice I've ever had definitely came from Zach's mom. Definitely. When looking for good advice, it's important to go to the right source. I know that if I'm ever in trouble, if I ever have a problem that I need fixing, I can pop some water in the microwave, heat it up, throw some tea bags in there, and I can sit there, sip on the tea, and talk to Zach's mom, because I know she'll have every answer I need.